All right, let's start adding quests to our character's quest log. So I'm going to close all the other tabs real quick. Close tabs to the right. I'm going to save everything because I forgot to do that at the end of the last video. And then I'm going to open up my character's blueprint because I need to add some variables over to her. So I'm going to add three. Two are going to be uh, quest list enumerator arrays. And the first one is the accepted quests, which will be a quest list enumerator array compile. Then I'm going to duplicate that one, and this will be the completed quests array. Now for the next one, it's going to be our quest log that'll keep track of the information of the quest that we have accepted. So for the quest log, it is going to be a quest info structure, but it's still going to be an array. We're going to need it to be that, yeah. All right, so now we have an accepted quests. These will be the ones you're currently doing, ones you've already completed, and then the information for each of the accepted quests right here. This is how we'll keep track of like the kills and stuff like that. So now we want to, in our quest icon, once we click this, we want it to actually cast over to the player and add this ID to them. So in here, we're going to highlight the button and add an unclicked event, but not there because that's in the way. Now when the button is clicked, I want it to cast to my player blueprint. We'll get the player character for the object. And the first thing we want to do is see if the character already has that quest. So I'm going to get accepted quests and see if it contains, cons I don't know how to spell, contains an item. Now the item is going to be the quest info struct broken open to get that quest ID just like that. So if the accepted quests already contains this quest ID, then we need to do something different. But if it doesn't, then we'll do we'll add it to the character. So I'm going to branch hook that just like that. And if false, meaning our accepted quests does not contain that quest ID, we want to add it. So I am going to let's see from the accepted quests, just add unique and hook that quest ID right there. Just gonna kinda clean up these wires before I lose my ever loving mind. It's driving me crazy and it's a short trip. <laughs> Alright, so after we do that, then we need to add the quest info. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and promote this player reference variable. Player, ooh, that's gonna bug me. Get down, little E. What you doing to me? All right, so we hook that up just like that. Back that up. So after we add our the quest ID to our accepted quests, we need to add the quest info. So I'm gonna get out my player, get the quest log. And I'm going to add unique. And the unique thing we're going to add is the quest info from this button. So we're cast into the player, checking to see if they've already accepted the quest. If they have not, we're adding it. And if they have, we'll do something else. So let's just to test it, we're going to do a print string. I don't know what the hell that noise is, but it is loud. <laughs> So if they are adding it, then we'll say quest, get out of here so they can see, quest accepted exclamation, then we'll copy that, move it up to the true side, and instead of quest accepted, it'll say quest in progress. So let's compile that real quick and test it out. So I'm going to run over to my quest giver. I have now accepted the quest, and it's telling me the quest is in progress, so I can't 
click on it anymore. We're gonna leave a. I know a lot of games that um, the the quest disappears from the log until once you've accepted it, and then when it comes back once you do it. But we're just gonna leave it like this because it works. And that way, it's easier uh, in the long run, and it works just the same. So once we accept the quest. Let's see, we can get rid of these print strings now. This is basically all we're going to have to do right here for now on the false side. On the true side, we need to check the player's inventory. Oh, oh, oh no, no, no. We need to do something based on the actual quest info. So I'm going to grab out my quest info and break it open because it's not always going to be a collect quest. Now on the quest type, I'm going to do a switch on quest type enumerator. Hook that to the true side. Now for the collect, the collect is the first one that we're going to set up. So, from collect, we want to get our quest info, break it open, because we need this collectibles. I'm going to move this way up. Now from the collectibles, there's two things we're going to need. The first one is called keys. Now this is a reference to the actors that we set up when we set that map style thing. So the collect, I'm going to get the keys for that. And then the other one is values. The values are the numbers associated with the keys. So the keys and the values are at the same index array. Or same array index, whatever you want to say it. Now let's just hide unconnected pins so we can move this down and make it look a little nicer. Now for each loop of this, we are going to... Sorry, my phone vibrated. I thought it was something, might have been something important. It is not. I'm going to get my player reference. I'm going to get her inventory. And then for each item of the inventory, we want to do a for each loop. For each loop. Now right at the end of the values, we'll hook that up like that. So for each element of your inventory, you want to see if the class matches any of these. So how we're going to do that is I'm going to do another for each loop. And now things start getting a little bit more complicated when you start combining for each loops. But the way to look at it is when it fires this one off, it'll fire this one off for every single item inside here. So if you have three items in here, it'll fire off, fire off as many keys as you have, and then cycle back through and do this. So it'll go 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. That kind of thing, you know? So it's like putting a loop inside a loop. It goes, ooh, 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 kind of thing. I don't know if I'm explaining it well. <laughs> or sanely, I don't know. Let's see. Let's break that item info open from the inventory. And we're going to see if the item class is equal to this array element. We're going to add a branch. Hook this to this loop body. Hook that like that. So if the class matches, then we want to see if the current stack is equal to the value at that point. Mm, actually, we don't need the branch yet. We need an and. God, could I said that anymore, redneck? And. All right, so we're going to get a copy of the value at the index for the key that we found this. And if the value, or if the current stack is greater than the value, or greater than or equal to, then we'll hook up our branch. So we're gonna, off the current stack, we're gonna see if it's greater than or equal to the number required from our value. So if the class matches, and we're holding more 
or equal to the amount that we need, then, then the magic happens. Then we will add another variable over here called items checked. That will be an integer that we will grab out and on true we will increment so this is this will help if you have multiple keys um, then we'll be able to see how many of the keys actually added up or have the right amount of items so off the first complete the completed for the first for each loop We want to get the length. Let's see, I'm just going to get another quest info variable. Break it open because we need that collectibles one more time. I'm going to get the key, not get the keys. I'm just going to type keys. Hide unconnected because we don't need them. So off this first for each loop, once it's completed, we want to get the length of this keys array. So we're going to get the length and see if it is equal to the number of items checked off. So we're going to do an equal, 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 and see if they're equal to each other with a branch. So this will be if you have two items that you need to collect, like a certain number of It'll check both the, for both of those items, and if you have the right number, then it'll say you got one, you got two, and then once that's done, it'll compare them. So we don't have to subtract anything right here, because the length and the items checked would be starting at one each time. So if true, then we will get our player reference, get our quest info one more time, break that bad boy open. Move it down. Try to move it you know, not in the way. Then from the reward, we're going to do a for each loop. Yeah, lots of for each loops once you start getting into the more complicated stuff, I suppose. <laughs> but for each element inside the reward, we are going to enum to string because we want to get data table row. The data table is going to be our item info. We'll hook that string right to the row name. And then on row found, we will get our player reference and we want to pick up item so that we can claim our reward. Now once we've gotten our reward, Oh, well, that's not that's not our full reward, is it? All right, so I'm gonna grab out my player reference one more time. Get gold. Set gold. From the gold, I'm going to add to it our gold reward amount because we've qualified for a gold card. Hooray! No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Let's see, kind of line it up a little bit, a little bit, so I don't lose my dang mind. All right. Now what we can do is once we've got our our items and our gold, we'll come back and set the other ones up later, but now we need to actually remove this from our accepted quests and move it to our completed. So I'm going to get my accepted quests. I'm going to remove item. The item I remove will be my quest ID. Come on. There we go. So I'm going to remove the quest ID from my accepted. And I'm going to get my completed, oop, completed quests. And add unique 
right there, just like that. So now we're removing it from our accepted quests, adding it to our completed quests, and we can go ahead and remove, let me grab one more player reference. Then we can get our quest log. And find item, which will be the quest info right here. And then the, we will get a copy of that item at that number because this finds the index of that quest and then we need to remove it so we will from the quest log remove item the item being the one we find and got alright oh that looks looks kinda pretty but it also looks fairly complicated, but it's really not. Let's do a little recap. So on the button clicked inside our quest icon, we're casting to the player, getting a reference, and then we're seeing if they've already accepted this quest. If they've already completed this quest, it won't even be available for them to click on, so we don't need to worry about that. But if our accepted quest contains the quest ID, if it doesn't, then it will add it to our accepted quest log and add the quest info to our quest log. If it does, then on collect... Oh, one thing we need to do on collect. I'm glad I came back for the recap. So, right at the beginning of the collect quest line, we need to set items checked back to zero. So that, you know, each time we click and see, then we can tell uh, accurately. So we're setting that items checked back to zero. We're getting the keys and values from the collectibles map. And for each loop of our inventory, we're comparing it to the keys of uh, the array element of the keys, seeing if they match and if we have more than required from the values. And if so, we're adding to our items checked. And once that's all done, once it runs through every key instance, then we'll see if the number of items checked matches the length of the items in the array. And if it does, then we're looping through, getting our reward. So on false, I'm just going to add a print string real quick that says quest incomplete dot dot dot. I'm going to copy it and add it way over here at the very end. Wait. Yeah, way over here at the very end. Quest completed. Alright, so one important thing to remember is uh, you want to make sure that you're not adding this completed section onto the end of the loop body. So you want it to loop through and get all the items that you want, but once it's done all that, then you want to set the gold and all that off the completed. So sometimes when I would do these, I would mess up and add everything to the loop body, and then it would just stutter and crash. So the completed is where you want to do the final steps after it loops through all the items. So let's take a quick look, see. So if I run up, talk to her. Quest incomplete. But now, let me pick up these bushes, green herbs, because that quest required them. Quest completed, and if I look in here, then I've gotten my mana potion reward and 750 gold. What? I thought I said it. I must already have, yeah, I've already got 500. But the cool thing is now if we pick up these herbs and then accept the quest, quest completed just like that because we already had the items. Now in the next one we'll start going through and making it to where once you complete the quest it removes it from the, the actor so that you can't just complete it over and over again. But I think this one's going on, yeah, pretty long. So I will see y'all in the next one for that. See you in a bit. Bye.